Okay, everyone, so I want to talk about something that I feel like even a lot of Christians don't understand, uh, and especially people outside of the sphere of Christianity uh, just don't really understand this topic. Uh, now, something drastic in my life changed the past six months uh, when I began to think of Christianity more as a lifestyle than as a, a, a religion or, or like a uh, like, like I'll just go to church on Sunday type thing and maybe read scripture every now and then, maybe even every night, uh, pray at the end of the day or in the morning. Uh, and that, that's it. You're a Christian, right? Um, and sure, like I'm not de- denying the fact that there are many people who are truly saved, who are truly Christians, who have accepted Jesus in their heart and have confessed with their mouth that they accept Christ as Lord. Uh, I'm not denying that that's the case um, if they don't put certain things into practice that I'm going to talk about here or at least um, acknowledge that there's a next level to this, right? Um, Somebody who has been walking with the Lord much longer than I have actually said to me a few months back that his life changed drastically when he began to make it a not only a daily practice, but a moment to moment practice to walk with the Lord and to actually feel God's presence in the moment from moment to moment all day. Um, And it's not like it's hard. It's just a conscious effort to walk in the spirit. And so two things I want to talk about walking in the spirit. That's Romans eight. We're going to talk about really quick. And, you know, this is sort of textbook Christianity, um, it, it, but it, it's, it's, it's very, well, textbook, it's obviously textbook, it's, it's, out of, it's, out of the, it's out of the Bible, no kidding. No, but it's like very basic, but a lot of people don't put this into practice. They think of it more as a, um, uh, a, a sort of ritual than they do a lifestyle. Um, And so I want to talk about that for a second. And I also want to talk about why Christians don't sin, um, which Romans 8 talks about and alludes to. Uh, I I should say why we try not to sin. Um, It's because uh, we love God. We do it out of a place of love instead of fear. We know that there is no condemnation. You try not to do anything that is contrary to the law of God uh, because you love God, not because you're condemned for it. So let's look at um, Romans 8. And this is the New King James Version, of course. Uh, I I know people will just uh, complain all day about what version you use (laughs) because this is YouTube. Um, but uh, I'm going to use the New King James Version. It's basically almost the same exact thing as the King James Version, and not many people will argue with that. Um, so, this is Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And what does that mean? Walking according to the, the Spirit. That's a moment-to-moment practice. No condemnation. In Romans 7, of course, uh, Paul is ta- goes on to talk about, you know, sin and how bad it is, basically, you know, and, and how we are all victims of sin, that we all uh, do sin, and we don't want to, but look at us, we do it anyway. And Romans 8 goes on here. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemns him in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. 
For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So it's very straightforward there. And, you know, it, it, a lot of people will ask, like, how do I stop being a glutton and eating too much and, you know, getting fat and drinking Coca-Colas? Well, you walk according to the Spirit and you behold Christ, right? It's not about... um it's not even necessarily about resisting the sin per se. Sometimes it kind of is, but but it's more about beholding Christ and walking in the Spirit. It, 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 you know, it, it's a, it's it's more like um, denying your flesh. And moving on, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. So, this is very important um, because what it's saying is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. And if you go to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, it says this, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now, I really want you to dwell on that for a second. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So once you accept Jesus and you start walking and you're walking in the spirit, you're, you're making it a lifestyle. What is happening? You're actually becoming one spirit with him therefore there the, it, w- what that implies is that there's that the more you walk in the spirit the more you behold Jesus there be there becomes less of a distinct um uh differentiation between you and essentially God right and of course, because we're flesh, we're not always able to fully do that, but we have the opportunity to do it in every moment and to actually become one spirit with him. Think about that. And this is why we flee sexual immorality, as scripture goes on to say, every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And this is why we try not to sin, partly as well. Because, obviously because we love God, but because we don't want to desecrate God who we're we're becoming and beholding one spirit with him only through Jesus of course and then 2 Corinthians 3:17 says now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So by beholding with an unveiled face, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Like, really think about that. Really think about what this is saying.
Uh, and then, so this is back to Romans 8. Um, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So again, this is not from a place of fear that we try not to sin. It's from a place of love. And adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father we've been adopted into the family of God and it's this is why Christianity is about relationship with God and beholding Jesus and becoming one with the spirit of God with the Holy Spirit and this is what we abide in now through Jesus we 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 have this new covenant with 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 God and it has to do with walking in the spirit here the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if indeed we suffer with him then we must also be glorified together so again the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So, um, this is, this is like very similar to the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit sort of combines with our spirit. And this is why we become children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs. So we're seated at the right hand of the throne. We're heirs with God, with Jesus. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. So we, Christ suffered, but he's also glorified. This is why we suffer, but we are also glorified through him. So this is sort of... Um, This is what I mean by like, this is like a lifestyle of walking in the spirit. This isn't, (laughs) you know, this isn't um, some sort of go through the motions, right? This is a conscious effort to deny the flesh, walk in the spirit, behold Christ and become more like him and and one with him right we behold his face and become more like him but we all with an unveiled face behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as the spirit as by or as by the spirit of the Lord but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. This is scripture. And like that's how you not, that is how you resist sin by beholding Jesus. It's not by always thinking about this idea of like, I have to not sin. I have to not do the things I don't want to do. And you can even lump those things in there with sin. I've always contended that like, even the things that these little things that perhaps has to do with discipline, right? These little things that, um, you try not to do that you don't want to do that you know is wrong or you know isn't good for you or you know isn't good for others. Um, Maybe some of them more complicated than what the Ten Commandments lists, for instance, you know? Um, Like if you don't, maybe you have a problem with littering or something and you you don't want to litter. It's it's not necessarily in the Ten Commandments, but you can kind of lump that in with with the things you you don't want to do. What would really Jesus do, right? And that's what you're trying to do. You're becoming... You're becoming more like him. So, you know, this is a lifestyle. 
guys. And, and moment to moment, we should be walking in the spirit or trying to being a, a conscious, uh, making a conscious effort to do that, not just at the end of the day, reading the Bible or something. So that's my message to everybody out there. Um, even if you're not a Christian, maybe understanding this, like what it means to actually be a Christian, you might get a, a, a better perspective of that. Um, so like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. It's been Press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.